Okay, hello everybody and welcome to our, our fifth lunchtime webinar. And this week we're, we're changing topics slightly. So we have the project manager who smiled, the value of fun in projects. And we are delighted to have Peter Taylor, the lazy project manager, um, self-titled um, from his book. He's the author of the book, The Lazy Project Manager. And he's joining us today to bring a little bit of fun into what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So we do have, um, I think a lot of you are actually familiar with, with Peter, um, and I was introduced to Peter by Chris Leonard, who is one of our PMI members, and he's um, hopefully on the webinar with us uh, today as well, listening in. Um, you may remember our first webinar that we ran right at the end of March was on risk management, and we did ask a question on what's the most important thing about project management, and one of the possible answers was fun, and we had exactly zero responses fun to that, which I thought was a bit sad because our jobs can be quite tough from day to day, but it is nice if we can enjoy what we're doing. Um, Chris contacted me after the webinar and said, you should check this guy, Peter Taylor, out. Uh, he's written a book called The Project Manager Who Smiled. So um, I thought, OK, let's get in touch with, with Peter. And it was interesting because the, all the committee knew who he was. So I was the only person who didn't know. So for me, this has been a great learning. And hopefully for you as PMI members, it will show you as well that we do take your comments and your recommendations on board. And we do like to, to involve your ideas and, and get them into our webinars and our events as well. So, um, so it, I think it's a very positive thing and it's a change of tack as well. We've had some very heavy topics in the last couple of weeks, obviously with the risk management, as I mentioned, and with crisis management. Um, and we've all obviously been tackling with working with the remote working more than we maybe usually do. So it's nice to, to switch gears today. Before I introduce you to Peter and let him take over on this presentation, I do, as usual, want to talk to you a little bit about menti.com and, and I will um, take some feedback from people as well. I'll make sure that we mention this code throughout the webinar as well so that you're, you're seeing what we're doing. So again, if you can grab your phone, so it's great if you can do this on either a second monitor if you have one or grab your phone and go to menti.com and use the code 401188. We're going to ask you the usual questions. We, we, we really want to know where you're dialing in and you're joining us from ac across the country. We'd like to know what organization you're working in and that's to help us try and build webinars that maybe suit different, different um, organizations and different types of project management. And as always, we'd like you to chip in with any comments or questions that you might have for, for Peter in the webinar today. Um, Similar to what we did last week, we're going to hold the questions to the end. And because we are talking about the project manager who smiled and the value of fun in projects, we would like to hear your stories as well, your positive stories and, and fun that you've had in projects as well. So do use the, the menti.com poll to, to give us those inputs. And uh, you can also use the questions box in GoToWebinar as well if you'd like to, if for some reason you don't have a sec second device to work on. So um, do pop in, I'll, I'll drop it into the chat from time to time, 401188, just to let you know what's going on there. And at the very end, when Peter is taking questions, we will go through the menti.com responses as well. And we will also share those after the webinar as we always do. So um, I'm going to hand over now to, to Peter and let him intro, introduce himself and introduce his, his topic as well. So as you probably heard me say there, I'm excited to take a little bit of a, a change of tack for today and focus again on our soft skills as, as project managers. So uh, Peter, you're okay there if I hand over to you? Just a moment, guys. I'm just wondering. I I can't hear Peter at the moment, so I'm just going to check. I'm here. I'm here now. Ah, oh, super. Okay. okay. All wow. right. All good. Okay. So we should have got my voice, yeah, and hopefully you got some. You got some slides as well. Great. All Perfect. right. Um, okay. Let off me we go then. Yeah. Okay. Right. So yes, thank you very much and welcome uh, to this session on Project Management Fund. Thanks for that great introduction, Katrina, and I'm delighted to uh, to join you today. Uh, it's good to see a, a great number of you on the call and uh, hopefully you'll all walk away with something uh, of interest and of value to you uh, as we go through this, this particular presentation. So why did the project manager cross the road to get to the critical path? Of course, 
there we go. That's the kind of level of humor you're going to experience today. My name is Peter Taylor. I am the Lazy Project Manager, and I want today to just not be the Lazy Project Manager. I want to be the Lazy and Funny Project Manager. That's what I'm aiming to do anyway. Um, and we can have a lot of fun with this. I did a, I did a great session uh, for PMI in Budapest where we actually got everybody in the audience to wear a, a red nose at the end of the session. And uh, you can have a lot of fun. You can have a lot of fun while still, I think, getting the job done, while still um, you know, working hard and being very, very productive. Uh, I truly believe this. So there's a lot I think we can talk about and we're gonna do it um, right now. So what am I, so you know, I, I am, these days, primarily I'm a consultant, independent consultant, and also a speaker. I used to uh, enjoy traveling to exotic places, and uh, obviously that's come to a complete standstill now. Um, this, is, uh, uh, this is a quote from uh, someone, who actually a very nice person um, in Australia. I don't actually know who, who, who said this. This is one of those blind surveys that came in at the end of a conference. Someone obviously quite like me, but I do have to point out to people that uh, it's a brilliant quote, but it's not a quote from my mother. And that is not even a picture of my mother. I stole somebody else's mother to put up there because when I originally did this, I had a picture of my own mother and she didn't like it very much. And uh, so I had to change it. So predominantly this is what I do. I'm an international speaker. I'm an author. This is actually presentation number 386 I've done. Over the last 10 years, I've been in 25 countries and I'd love to do some more real soon. I, I do a mixture of remote and also live. And obviously, it's great to go to the physical uh, conferences and congresses, etc. But, you know, these days, obviously, it's, you know, everything that's uh, planned ahead at the moment is remote. And that's fine because I still think you can be very, very engaged and hopefully share your knowledge through this, this approach. Um, at work. A good laugh not only reduces tension and relieves stress, but it also also helps to increase team bonding and boost morale. This is a quote from a guy called Andrew Filev. Andrew is a founder of Rike. He's one of that's one of the project management technology companies. There are many out there. I'm not not specifically promoting this one, but and I and I it struck me like when this this whole crisis started, I was thinking, well, what can I do? What can I do? Well, a lot of what I do is remote based working. So I thought, well, great. The first thing I can do, I can start doing some some sharing of how I work remotely, the kind of tips and techniques I've got, you know, what works, what doesn't work, that kind of thing. And then suddenly on, and I'm predominantly on LinkedIn, and I'd love for you to join me on LinkedIn, um, connect to me. But I, suddenly there was this there was this huge wave of everybody was talking about how to work remotely that you know the world was full of experts it seems and and I thought well that's no point in me adding to that nobody's going to listen to it what else can I do and then I remembered a book I wrote back in 2013 called the project manager who smiled um and I I thought well this, this is something I could do this is this is something I believe in this having the right positive attitude, the right level of fun uh, that it does do, as exactly says there, it does increase team bonding, it does boost morale. So why don't I do that? And so what I did was I did a LinkedIn post, which just blew me away because I, you know, I, I do posts and, and they get a few thousand views on a regular basis. But this one, the last time I looked, it was around mid 35,000 views or something like that. Um, I, gave, I gave away copies of the, the project manager who smiled. And it seemed to go down very, very well. And then I thought, well, OK, I still have, strangely, a lot of time on my hands right now. So what else can I do? And I started doing uh, webinars based on the project manager as well. And I was delighted when uh, Katrina and uh, um, Jackie came to me and said, you know, would you like to do one for the for PMI Island? And uh, here we are. So the basis of all this, the basis of the book really is is this. And Reich sponsored the book when it, when it first came out, which is why I have a great con uh, quote from Andrew. Because we were totally in tune. We met at a conference and we talked about things and we were totally in aligned as far as this was concerned, that, you know, this this right approach, this this level of humor, appropriate and suitable humor, wow, you can really make things different. And this is not soft, idealistic, naive, hippie thinking. This is another uh, guy who, uh, you know, put in a, the forward into the book and uh, Alexandra Kirov, uh, who runs a, a brilliant company called Woohoo Inc., and, but he, what he talks about is happiness and the power of happiness. He, and he, again, is a, he's a really fun presenter. And so, but his point here is that, okay, you know, this is not, this is not some vague rubbish, you know, this, uh, let's have fun and life will be better sort of thing. It's not this soft, idealistic, naive, hippie thinking, as he says, it is, it is real, it is practical, it is productive to do this. And I, I totally believe that. Now, let's just talk about this. 
how can we prove this? Or how can I demonstrate it? Perhaps is a better way. Well, this is uh, Dr. Zeus, and Dr. Zeus. For me, this is a word from someone who's really qualified to talk about fun, because Zeus wrote the the Cat in the Hat. Uh, the first of many strange and weird books. If you've ever read them or ever read them to your children, you'll know they are bizarre and crazy and colorful and wacky and all those sort of things. But Zeus, um, at that point, he looked, you know, he had a problem because the famous um, American, the US Dick and Jane reading primers were, as far as he was concerned, insanely boring. And because these, bore, these, these conversations were, were boring, the, these books were completely boring, um, the kids just weren't interested in the material. I mean, they had the right words in there, and they had all the words that the kids do, you know, want to uh, need to learn at that age. But the stories were dull, 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 dull. And because the kids weren't interested, they weren't exactly compelled to use it repeatedly in their efforts to learn to read. And so, the Cat in the Hat was born. Smart guy Zeus, because kids found these new books engaging. They found these new books fun. They found these new books interesting and they learnt faster as a result. It's kind of gamification. This is something I, I do a lot of as well. When if I do uh, my workshops, masterclasses, what do you want to call them, uh, my training sessions, there's a, there's a lot of fun, there's a lot of game inside it. There's one uh, which is uh, another book I've written, The Lazy Project Manager and The Project from Hell. And this is a, a gamified experience where it's the worst possible project in history, perhaps. It was one I was involved in in rescuing. I make the clear point I wasn't involved in making it go to go bad in the first place. I was involved in rescuing it. And from that, I realized there was a kind of case study in there. And the way this, this works is that you know, we put people into teams. Um, they are given the time sequence of this project from start to point of failure. And they're given the one thing that every project manager would love to have, and that is a time machine. And they can go they can use the time machine once and it's really about going back in time and what changes would you make uh, you know, it's cause and effects and it, it's a great way of doing team building team bonding um, looking at new new groups of people to work together assessing project management uh, capabilities and competence and, and and everybody enjoys it when i've seen some fantastic presentations at the end of this you know it's it's all about you know you can you can use powerpoint you can use flip charts you can use post-it notes i've seen people role play uh, i've seen people do it as a fairy tale um it's it's so much fun seeing how people produce the uh, solution as far as they're concerned and we have team names all that kind of stuff and this is one of the one you know one of the the, the learning experiences that are, you know is now fully fledged to be a, a remote uh, offering and I'm, I'm currently working with a couple of companies where they're kind of rebuilding their team engagement because of everything that's gone on they felt a little bit fragmented people were feeling a little bit off and it's a learning experience but it's also a lot of fun so gamification is a very powerful thing Victor Borge the comedian and musician said the shortest distance between two people is laughter now right now I'm in England and most of you aren't but if I can make you laugh, if the whole point about this is this: there's an instant connection. If you can make somebody laugh, you are in some way so close to them for that, that moment when that humor takes place. Uh, I truly believe that. And humor can come out about at, at even the craziest times. So this is, um, you know, I mentioned earlier, I did this uh, presentation on fun, uh, PMI Budapest a while back. And uh, the flight back, was quite a, an interesting flight for me. Now, I've I've traveled a lot, as I've said, and, and I haven't particularly had a lot of problems. I mean, you know, usual sort of delays and things, but I'm on this flight, this BA flight back into Heathrow, and we're, we're perhaps half an hour out, when suddenly I've heard a, an announcement, which is a, an announcement I've never heard before. And the announcement was from the captain saying, could all cabin st uh, staff immediately attend the the, uh, the, you know, the front of the plane and and, you know, that gets your attention. It's like, well, okay, that's, I have never heard that before. What's going on? And then shortly after that, a second announcement came from the captain saying that uh, they had uncovered some sort of uh, leakage on the plane. They weren't quite sure what it was, but they had initiated uh, emergency landing protocol. Well, that got everybody's attention at that point, of course. So we uh, we were quickly, you know, anything that was cleared up was cleared up and we were put in our seats, upright position, seat belts make securely on. I sit, I sit typically in the um, uh, the emergency exit over the wing there. Uh, you get a little bit more space. And uh, the guy next to me, 
very quickly this dark humor came out because he said hey i used to i used to sit here for the extra leg room and i said but I'm, I'm thinking now this is a really good place to sit in this situation dark humor and if you've ever flown into heathrow um you'll know there is the famous stack which is where all the planes stack up in the sky waiting for their permission to come into land and you can be in that stack going round and round for quite some time well of course we're on emergency protocol and we came straight into Heathrow. And of course, someone else uh, joked about the fact this is one way of avoiding the Heathrow stack and getting to land on time. Humor, dark humor. Uh, actually, we landed. We were taken to a safe area. The plane was checked over. Eventually, people came on board. They checked internally. There didn't seem to be anything wrong. Uh, we were taken off to a holding area where we had, there was a very quick medical check. And then we were sent on our way. Nobody, as far as I was concerned, was injured in any way. And I have no idea what the uh, the problem was. but. Clearly, it was an experience that you don't really want to have to go through, but it was it was humor. Humor came through very, very quickly. And we're seeing a lot of humor right now, aren't we? I mean, I quite like this one, you know, remote learning. Luke, you must learn the ways of the force. I am ready, Obi-Wan. OK, let's see here. After you've logged in, you're going to want to go to the student portal and click Jedi. I quite like that one. There's a lot of other ones out there. My other favorite one right now is, you know, what is the biggest accelerator to digital transformation? You know, is it the CEO? Is it the CTO? Is it the CIO? Or is it COVID-19? Of course, the answer is it's COVID-19. It's making people change at a rate they never would have changed beforehand. Richard Branson said, there's a guy having a lot of trouble at the moment, but he said, have fun. And I hope he's still having some degree of fun right now. But he said, have fun. Success will follow. If you aren't having fun, you are doing it wrong. So again, we're back to this. There is value in fun. There is, there, is, there is profit, if you like, in personal productivity when it comes to fun. It actually takes less muscles to, um, to smile, apparently, um, as I've been told. And, um, it certainly takes uh, you know, more effort, therefore, to, to look miserable. This is a character on the right. It's Water by Jeff Dunham, who's a ventriloquist. I find Jeff Dunham extremely funny, uh, quite a rude uh, guy, comedian. But his character, Water, is forever utterly miserable as you can tell from that picture and the, the thing here is the fact that you know really we shouldn't be like this you know we should we, we should more naturally lend towards being positive and optimistic and, and happy because it has a lot of benefit it gives you this this bounce back factor so you know if you are if you're challenged with something if you are positive, optimistic, you know, the right level of attitude, the right level of fun, uh, the team is connected the right way, you recover faster than if you are of a pessimistic nature. And it helps work better with teamies, that's for sure. Um, teamies, you know, kind of connect and work with you in a way that bonds you, is kind of where we started. If you have this kind of this attitude of there is going to be fun and there are going to be serious times, of course, but generally speaking, we, we are very open to having that light level of fun and enjoyment. And we want to make the project experience a good one. And we want you to get on with each other and we want to have some social events, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, there is a time and a place for the right joke and humor and all the rest of it. And there are times we need to you know, buckle down and, and just focus on, on the hard work. But it really helps work better with teammates if you do that. And it makes you popular, you know, it infectious to others in a good way, I, I hasten to add. You know, it, 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 it's the Wisdom of Fun says that studies show that happy people help other people more. So if you're a happy person, you are more likely to help someone else. And guess what? Happy people help other happy people even more than that. So if you've got happiness working with happiness and you have problems and challenges, then you bounce back as a result of that. You'll get support from your, your teams as a, as a part because of that. You know, it's it's an ever increasing value proposition, really, that you can do great things by having this kind of attitude. There was a study done, a very long study, actually, and, and the outcome of this was that the the argument is that happy, positive people actually live longer. So I'm not just talking about your project here. I'm talking about life. What they did was they they went to a, a group of nuns, well, novices. So these these are the these are this is the stage just prior to taking uh, the vows and full commitment to becoming a nun. So this group of novices, they went to them and they asked them to write a short bio, a short statement of how they felt about life, and. They came back many years later, and at the age of 85, this group of uh, novices who are now obviously very, uh, you know, have been nuns for quite some time, 
they came back and they found something really interesting. They found that the novices, no, now nuns, who, who had this cheerful bio, this cheerful outlook, 90% of them were still alive at the age of 85. And what they also found was the ones that had this less cheerful bio, this, this less positive outlook on life, um, at the age of 85, 54% of those were still alive. So a significant difference in that one piece of um, research there. And not only that, there's a universal truth has been proven in a, a Swedish study, and it's it's the it's the facial response mechanism. And it goes like this, and this is something you can you can do with your your team. You can do it remotely, yeah, you, as well. But uh, the way it works is, you have you put people into pairs, and you have an A person and a B person. And what you do is you tell the A person to smile and look happy, and by default, by natural reaction, the B person will respond with a smiling, happy face. And this are having a really, really bad day, of course. But typically, a smile triggers a smile in someone else. It's amazing right now. I, you know, I, I, I guess you've probably experienced this as well. I, I, I go for my daily walk around the village I live in, um, social distancing and all the rest of it. But the number of people that now talk to me, oh, and I talk to them as we go around, and it's, it's, it's always with a, you know, it's usually just a simple good morning, good afternoon, and a smile, and you get a smile back, and then vice versa. In the pairs again, if you tell the person A, a to now look really miserable, then typically person B will at least remove the smile from their face, but often will um, emulate the, the unhappiness and would look quite sad themselves. So this facial response mechanism is absolutely real. And if you want to have real fun in the groups, then what you do is get the A person to smile and the B person has to try and look really miserable and then swap it around. And you get a lot of laughter, a lot of energy in the room with that simple exercise. It's a bit of a, an icebreaker. It's a bit of a fun thing to do at a break or at the start of another session or whatever. Yeah, so these are simple things you can do. But behind it, there is this universal truth, uh, this facial response mechanism. All right, we're going to have some jokes now. One of the reasons I, I wrote the book the project manager who smiled was there were because there to me there was some terrible humor the lazy project manager when i wrote it uh, just over 10 years ago i'm told that um you know one of the things one of the things that people like about it is one it's short two it's um it's got a lot of uh, stories in it where i get things completely wrong but learn important lessons so it's very honest uh, uh, three um there's a lot of fun in it and when i was writing that book i was i kind of started looking at the the uh, well, I started searching for project management fun, project management humor, that kind of thing. And there are some terrible jokes, really bad jokes. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to create a book that uh, had a lot better uh, humor in it. But we're going to we're going to start with some of these jokes. This is the groan on ometer. And usually, you know, if you can do this live and you can hear the audience, then then you can hear the groans coming from the audience. But it goes like this. The nicest thing about not planning is that failure comes as a complete surprise and is not preceded by a period of worry and depression. This one usually gets the biggest groan because everybody's heard it. Um, so it's well worn and tired and, and not particularly funny. A risk is something nasty you smell and an issue is something nasty you stand in. It's actually quite a good definition of risk and issues, I think. You can actually use it when uh, when, I, when I'm talking about this. But you kind of get, you know what the analogy is, you know where this is, this is going uh, as far as that's concerned. I don't have to explain it to you. But I think this one, this one usually gets a bit of a laugh. It takes one woman nine months to have a baby. It cannot, cannot be done in one month by impregnating nine women. Grown, we all know that one. Any project can be estimated accurately once it's completed. Another grow. Actually, I'm not even sure it's true. I have um, I have gone in and looked at projects. You know, I've run PMOs for quite a few years across five organizations. Some of the biggest PMOs in the world are multi-billion dollar companies. And it's one of the things I love to do. Um, but, you know, when we used to go in as a PMO, we used to go and do reviews and health checks of projects, um, particularly at the end. It, I was still amazed at the the inability of project managers and the project team to truly demonstrate exactly the uh, the estimate or the actual uh, amounts of effort, resource, money, et cetera, had been deployed or, or consumed by this project because it just, they lose control at so many times. And so it is, even this kind of, you can estimate at the end, I'm not even sure it's true. And in fact, actually they've already rushed off to the next project. So nobody's got time to do this anyway. Nothing is impossible for the person who doesn't have to do it. Grown, true. 
Change is inevitable, except for the vending machine. Oh, I quite like this one, but the really reality is this is disappearing, isn't it? I mean, how many more, how many vending machines now and don't even take money? It's just uh, it's done on your phone or it's done on uh, your credit card. Um, so this whole you know history of never getting your money back from a vending machine is is disappearing over time. If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Well, it, it'll take you somewhere. Oh, I'm just ready to take you where you want to go, but it'll definitely take you somewhere. But I want to, now I'm going to talk about three stories where I've seen the value of fun. And the first one is, I mean, I know, I'm sure you guys know, there is an International Project Management Day. And uh, it's in November, it's the first Thursday in November. But it's not the most important day for project managers, I don't believe. There is a day in September which is called Speak Like a Pirate Day. This is far, far more fun, trust me. I discovered this quite some time ago. And at that time, I was running a, a PMO for uh, Siemens, and I worked with my core project team. We, I found this in the first year, we, we kind of had a lot of fun with this because you can find online pirate translators. You can, you can take normal emails and texts and Word documents and stuff like that, and you can turn it into pirate speak with lots of yars and things like that in there, and you can talk like Johnny Depp being uh, you know, the pirate in the Pirates of the Caribbean. But the first year we did this, I chased with my core team, and we had some fun. And I thought, this is brilliant. Um, so we're, you know, we're going to do this again. And so when I did it in the, the next time around, I got everybody an eye patch and an inflatable parrot and sent it to all of the project managers and we celebrated speak like a pirate day and everybody enjoyed it everybody had a lot of fun and most people you know got into the spirit of it we were doing real work we were using pirate translators which you can get in many languages interestingly um and there were a lot of german project managers in, in that in that group and they were you know having fun as well and at one point, one of the project managers in Germany, you know, they were, he was having a problem with a problem project. We were talking in pirate speak, etc. We we're trying to support him, and he, without thinking, he forwarded the email chain onto his boss for some input and some clarification or some advice. And of course, his his manager wanted to know what the hell was going on because, uh, you know, I can't even imagine what German pirate speak really looks like to another German, but particularly if you've no idea what's going on. So make sure when you have fun, make sure you make sure it is inclusive for everybody. The second thing we did when I ran a big PMO and I had something like 120 project managers all over Europe, uh, you know, we never got all these people together. I, I knew most of them. I managed to go and see most of them face to face, but we couldn't get them together as a group. And so one of the challenges we had was, well, how do we create a real community? And the sort of things we did was we had regular uh, what we call project pulse meetings, you know, webinar based, etc. But one of the things we found that was a lot of fun and engaging was we, we kind of evolved a thing which is called um, It's Friday. And on Friday, we actively encourage people to go out there and share all the jokes, the cartoons, the Dilbert cartoons, the YouTube videos, the funny songs or whatever um, about project management. And this really connected people because every week someone was sending something different. Now, you know, one of the things you've just got to be careful here is you've got to make sure that the humor is appropriate and suitable culturally, uh, sexually, all of that. You know, you just, uh, the guideline is, is really is if you have any doubts, don't do it. Or if you have any doubts, then try and validate it with a, a safe person. So, you know, for example, if you're trying to use some humor or a joke or something, and, and you're working with you know, someone in uh, India or, or someone in, in Canada or somewhere in Australia or wherever, and you're concerned about how the, the human might translate. If there is someone you trust uh, that actually works uh, or, or comes from that culture, test it, test it with them first before you actually go big bang public sort of thing. So just be careful. The final story I'm gonna tell you is, <clears throat> I was working on a project which was going really badly wrong, uh, terribly wrong. Um, it was for my, it was my personal project from hell in the sense that I, we just hit so many problems and it's that period of time, and I hope you've never experienced it, but it's a period of time when there is no, there's kind of no progress. You are consuming uh, time, resources, burning money, achieving nothing, and everybody hates everybody else on the project. Well, um, I tried several things and eventually I took my core team away <clears throat> to a hotel. We booked a meeting room in the morning I I got a facilitator in to help us do those, you know, you know, brainstorming, blue sky thinking, mood boarding, whatever. And people had a lot of fun, but reality was when that person left, the lady left at lunchtime, and I'm sitting there with my, my team of about 10 people, I'm thinking, I have no idea what I'm going to do this afternoon because everybody hates everybody still. 
And when we went back into the room, in a moment of um, desperation, in a moment of possible inspiration, I stood up and I, I said to everybody, I'm going to solve every single problem on this project right now. And everybody looked at me and I got up and I walked out the room, I closed the door and in a very loud voice from the other side of the door, I pretended to be my manager firing me. I gave it a minute and I walked back into the room. Most people got the joke. A couple of people looked disappointed I was still employed, but most people got the joke. And actually from that point, we did begin the very slow turnaround of this project. And, and I'm not gonna overestimate this. You know, We delivered massively late, massively over budget and quite significantly under scope, but we delivered something. And I definitely saw that, that moment of fun as the point where this project began to turn around. And it was a tough slog and everybody worked very hard on that project after that, but that humor really broke the tension in the project team. There's a huge amount going on right now. This is, I love this picture from the Lego team. Um, they're having some kind of call and they've obviously decided to go for a uh, fancy dress. Um, you know, probably not do that if you're going on to your next uh, remote steering meter or something, but this is a way of having fun. My partner, Juliet, is, uh, uh, you know, she's, she's uh, the executive assistant to the leadership team of a very large software company. And she, you know, there's a lot of business meetings still going. They haven't stopped by any means. I mean, they have regular calls, meetings, etc. But the thing she realized that was that was missing was the the ad hoc, the casual, the the water cooler or the coffee machine or the lunch break or the after dinner going down the pub. And so she started weekly coffee mornings, virtual coffee mornings, where people get together and just, you know, chill out, catch up and do the stuff that all that kind of socialness activity or interaction that was is missing particularly when you're only focused on some, in many cases, you know, back to back uh, business meetings. So even in these, these moments, I think there's, a, there's an advantage to having some fun and an opportunity to have fun. Okay, um, the book itself, I didn't really write this book. It was great, everybody wrote it for me. So it's got, it's got some case studies in there from a couple of PMOs. It's got some uh, great stories from some really good speakers. Uh, you know, people like Stephen Carver, who I know has spoken over in Ireland as well, uh, and lots of my friends from around the world. And it's got uh, you know, uh, many, many contributions from uh, individual project managers, uh, stories, experiences, jokes, etc. So it was a great, great book to write because really I was just compiling it. But what will happen is after this webinar, uh, you will be sent the book. Uh, Katrina will organize that. You'll get the, it's a PDF version, so anybody can read it. I'd love you to enjoy the book. That's what the first thing is. If you enjoy the book, share it. I don't care if you send it to one person or a thousand people. You know, I, it, it, this is just giving at this point in time. So please share the book, feel free to do that. And finally, the last thing I would ask is please, you know, connect to me on LinkedIn. This is a great way of connecting and communicating with people. Um, one last thing, uh, um, I've agreed with uh, PMI Ireland that we do a little bit of uh, a, a kind of uh, support sponsoring from a, a community I'm, I'm one of the leads on. It's called the PM Tribe. And the PM Tribe, you can see there, it's www.thepmtribe.com, hashtag the PM Tribe. It's a virtual community. It seems to be very timely. Uh, and the way this works is that um, once a, once a week, we have six faculty leads. There's myself, there's people like Elizabeth Harron and uh, you know, Colin D. Ellis and, and people like that. There's six of us in Australia, Europe and, and America. And every week we will run a, a one hour kind of coaching session for the community. We have different themes. Mine is, my group is all about working smarter, not harder, productivity. Um, and, and it's a great fun place to be. So. I'm offering up five free places, lifetime access places to, to people. Uh, what you have to do is you have to register for a free trial at the tribe. Once you're a member, just send me a message and say something like, hi, I'm from PMI Island or whatever, and I'll make sure your name is registered. And uh, in probably about 10 days time, I will look at the number of people who've joined and I will randomly pick five people and they will be upgraded to free lifetime access uh, membership. So check that out. If you have any questions, then you can contact me. You'll see my details on the next slide. Uh, and this is my final slide. I just summarize really, you know, I, I believe that there is value in fun. I believe you need to, as project manager, take response on this and, and inject that kind of humor, set the, the tone and for your for your project team and beyond. I think there, it doesn't mean it's you, go, you go crazy. It doesn't mean you turn up in a clown costume for your next meeting. Uh, it means you do it gently, gently, and we'll probably talk about that in the questions. That's typically the sort of thing 
people like to uh, explore. Um, but finally, as I said, you know, the PM Tribe is one of my uh, new initiatives. I'm not alone in this one. There are some great people with me. We'd love you to join. Um, and my new book uh, is Project Management, It's All Bollocks. Um, this is a lady called uh, Susie Palmer True. She's the head of change at the Open University. And she, she, this, she and her like other future of project management. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I've been around for, for way too long probably, but Susie has is a powerhouse of challenging uh, thoughts. She's from North of England. She speaks bluntly. She speaks plainly. She swears like a trooper. There's a lot of swearing in the book actually, and it's not an attack on project management. It's actually a, well, what project management seems to have got quite complicated, and there are a lot of people out there who are project managers. But there's a lot of people out there who are who run what I call projects as usual. This is where they're, they're delivering change as part of their day-to-day -day job. And so the book tries to find the essence of project management, and we try and we got it down to what we think are seven key or cracking ideas, um, uh, great ideas that people will need to follow. And that doesn't preclude them then moving on to becoming more formalised uh, as project management, you know, trains to certified, etc. But we're trying to say at the heart of this. You know, cutting through all the bollocks, etc. There is a lot of noise out there, like any uh, professional uh, world. Get to the basis of this one, and that's what that book's all about. And at that point, and I think I am pretty much on time, Katrina, I will stop talking and hand back to you. And I'd love to see what questions we've got through from people. Thanks, thanks, Peter. Actually, what I'll, I'll do is um, we've we've actually got a couple of questions through, but I just want to do what I normally do with everyone, just at the beginning and just we always share this by the way afterwards with the slides and with the recording um but we're curious every week to see where everyone is joining us from so we're um obviously we're the irish um ireland chapter of the pmi but we are starting to get people from outside of, of dublin we've got people from cork from from limerick from northern ireland from kildare we've actually got someone from england as well so and galway and letterkenny so it's getting wider and wider every week which we think is great um because the webinars have the the possibility to extend much further than the events obviously that we might might um arrange so it is great to see um and this does actually help us guys when we get back to organizing face-to-face -face real live events we'll be able to look at at this feedback and see if we can uh, target those areas as well so outside of particularly outside of, of um of dublin um in terms of the types of organizations again that also helps us because um, and your suggestions and ideas help us. So it do it come back to us and let us know if you have I ideas for a topic for our event or any suggestion or proposal. Um, but we're getting people from across telecoms, pharmaceutical, financial, retail. Um, so we're covering a lot of, of ground there. And it is important for us that we target you in terms of subject matter that, that is of interest to you as well. Um, Peter, hopefully you can see this because I should be um, sharing this with yes, everybody. Yes, I can see it. Um, yep. Um, we got a few more having fun, so I'm, I'm delighted to say it's like there's no pressure. You don't have to say that you're, you like having fun on your projects or it's important. Getting results, obviously, every time is is hugely important to absolutely everybody, and that that makes absolute sense. And it's always interesting. Even the last time we asked the question, getting results comes in higher than budget and and time and and uh, quality, because um, obviously we just want to we want to get the job done. But um, hopefully people are seeing that we we don't have to be um, in a negative space of mind the whole time. Hopefully it can be positive as well. Uh, but more importantly, let's pop on to some some questions and comments, Peter. And Mark Davenport popped a um, a quote in. He said, "Perhaps you you've have you heard the Douglas Adams quote? I love deadlines. I love the hooshing noise they make as they go by. So that's that's one that us project managers like to use a lot." Um, yes, actually, if you can that's see in, the, the comments and the questions there, Peter. Yeah, that's. I mean, the Douglas Adams ones. I'm a big fan of Douglas Adams, and that quote is in one of my books, absolutely. So I think there's a couple of questions here for you. How do you get fun instilled in an organisation's culture? That's definitely a very tough question, I think. <laughs> uh, slowly. I mean, I mean, you'll know what the culture of the organisation is. Uh, and like I said beforehand, jokingly, you know, you can't suddenly turn up in a clown costume and start falling about laughing. You you have to be considerate of your your culture of your organisation. And I think my advice is, you know, to do it down the organisation first. So you know, instill it in your project teams to begin with. 
you know, just demonstrate the value. And then I think if you're know, moving up the organization to your sponsors and so forth, your management, what you can do is try and showcase some great experiences where the fun has paid off. You know, if you can say, well, look, this this happened and this was quite humorous, but this is the outcome and how you know it's been a great outcome, then you're kind of not you're not joking with your upper management. You are sharing the value of the fun, et cetera. And I think you can do that on a very gradual basis. I do I do think it, it is um something that people are very conscious of. Where does the culture in an organization come from? And and I would say like it is it's it's very important that it is coming from the top down as well. So it's probably very important that, um, and you see one of the quotes here actually on the bottom um, right hand corner, we are lucky one of the core values in my organization is make it fun. Um, and that's probably maybe a very good way to do it is that if it's called out by senior management, look, you know, we have a serious job to do. We're here to make profit. We're here to deliver to our customers and we're here to stay in business. Um, but let's make it fun. So I think that's a very good, um, a good way that it's seen across the organization as something that's important. But I yeah, imagine that is, work. Yeah, yeah, no, that's brilliant. I mean, if, if you see that, and you see a lot in, um, you know, a lot of the new generation of companies, they kind of recognize that value from the beginning. It's some of the harder ones are the more established organizations, the larger enterprises, the ones that are driven by regulation, et cetera. It's, it's kind of harder to, to do that. But I still think there's opportunities. Definitely. Um, I have another question here that came up in the GoToWebinar, Peter, and it is uh, from Gary Connolly. Do you have any good techniques for delivering bad news to project stakeholders, perhaps in a fun way? Do you have any tips around that? No, don't do it. <laughs> it's like I think if you, I think if you got, okay. if you got bad news, I think the yeah. important thing with bad news is you build the story. And uh, you know, one of the joke, one of the stories actually yeah. in the like, project manager is where, you know, I would I was sent in to take over from from a project manager, and I quickly, you know, I quickly uncovered this. There's no way this project was going to be delivered on time, and there were lots of reasons, and most of the reasons were nothing to do with my company. They were to do with the client. And so I, I organized a meeting with the, the client's uh, project manager and their sponsor. And it was later on the afternoon. And I spoke to my uh, on-site consultant and said, I, I need to go to another client. I will be back and I'll be having this meeting. But, you know, it's going to be fine. I'm going to take these people through a, a, almost a, you know, a, a history story and identify every stage where it was the client's fault, really, the, the impact that we were going to be, in my mind, something like two months late. Well, I came back on site later on in the afternoon and I met the consultant who happened to be in the reception area and he said, oh, hi. He said, I've just spoke to the project manager, by the way. I saw him in the corridor. And I told him we're going to be two months late. And, and I'd lost it. I'd lost every opportunity of delivering that in a, in a sensible way. I, you know, I don't think you can, you, can, you can have that sort of humor in that situation personally. I think you just have to be very honest and break it down and look at the cause and effect all throughout. But that's a, that's an interesting point, actually. There's there's time for the humour and there's time not to have it. Yeah, um, absolutely. From yeah. from a personal experience of mine, and I have to say, humour was not used. But I think this is probably maybe coming more from the emotional or, or um, empathy side of things. Um, I I had a, a, a program manager that was you know I worked alongside this person, and he delivered the news that pieces of equipment were going to be six months late, and. I was quite fascinated because he delivered it to the steering committee without any emotion even showing on his face. It was almost as though he said, I am moving the time of the next steering meeting from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. without, there was, you know, nothing. There was no emotion and the steering flipped. They absolutely flipped. So for me, maybe that wasn't a situation. Clearly, humor was not the response to go, but, um, there is a method of showing empathy and, and sympathy that you know this is a pain point that as the project manager or the program manager you are equally at pain because of this bad news that has to be delivered um yep. maybe not something that's fun but maybe that just that is that you are showing empathy in those situations and that you do understand that there's some bad news that needs to, mm. to be uh, delivered. i'm looking at the one which is an example of uh, humor that backfired and and that's something you have to be cautious and prepared on. It's like you know when I do presentations, you know I've, I learnt you know through others that you don't you don't go in with a big humorous opening perspective because it can go wrong. And the example I had was I I had to go on a roadshow uh, in Edinburgh, Manchester, and London and present to 
this particular client who I was doing a project for, myself and a few others, and we were, we were going on this roadshow just to demonstrate the proof of concept, the progress we made, all that kind of stuff. And, and I had this great joke about change, um, and I thought, I'm gonna use this. And, I, and in, I did it in Edinburgh, and everybody laughed. And I did it in Manchester, and everybody laughed. And I did it in London. And, it, the, and London was by far the biggest group, and it also had the uh, senior executives in, in that group. And I, I made this joke, and there was nothing. And it's all, I think it was almost they were looking to senior management to for approval to even smile. It seemed to me, and I and I I'd lost it. That I I staggered my way through my you know 30 minute update on the project, um, but it completely threw me. So you just it can it can go wrong, and I've also you know I've had people come back and go, uh, well you didn't really particularly like that joke, um, Peter that you used. We you know it, it we not I don't think I'm ever overly offensive, but someone didn't get it, didn't like the humour. Uh, I particularly find that in America, for example. And so you have to take the feedback and you have to decide, is that something you're going to continue to use or do you have that different approach next time around? You learn through culture, cultural engagement, I think. And if, as I said earlier on, if you have, um, a, you know, if you have concerns, then don't do it or see if you can validate with someone that it's going to work or not. So test test out the, um, test the, the, um, the, the jokes out before you go in there. Um, yes. we've, uh, one question, Peter, that's not in front of you because it's coming through GoToWebinar and I, and I think at the moment what's come up a lot in our webinars is the fact that we're all remote working, that we're all, um, a lot of project managers are at distance anyway from their teams because we can deal with teams that are geographically co-located, but there's a very good question here from Damien and it's any fun tips on how to award a team virtually for hitting a milestone? And I, I do think that's very topical. So. Any ideas? Yes, any I, tips? Well, I think I mean I think you can use it as a reward or you can use it as a general thing. So one of the things I loved I heard recently was uh, one team, you know, they'd organized for pizza be, to be delivered to everybody. They actually found a pizza delivery company in each area and had a pizza delivered around the right stuff side time so they could have a, a, a virtual pizza party. I think um, you know, people like different things as well. I think people like to be showcased a little bit. And I love the technique of, you know, when you, yeah. you've got regular calls that you don't, it's not all you presenting. Uh, so when I ran, uh, you know, I had a big project and I was running uh, bi biweekly calls. Uh, we were covering most of the you know, most of the world effectively. Um, you know, we did a couple of things. We changed the time zones, timings for the call. So, you know, it wasn't, you know, the Australians having to get up in the early hours of the morning or staying up late. Um, we also allowed each each regional group to own and present it, that that meeting. Didn't mean there weren't things on there that I wanted, to, you know, I needed them to talk about, but we allowed them to showcase stuff. And we'd like, you know, particularly if they had, you know, a local celebration or a special date or something going on, we encouraged them to to share a little bit at the start of the session for for engagement. I think, you know, as far as rewards concerned. You know, I know things are a little bit um, uh, hit and miss at the moment, but you know, you can always organise things to be delivered, shared, etc. And you know, you uh, another one I heard of was where they uh, they had something delivered for someone, they wanted to award them something, uh, and it came in a box, and they weren't allowed to open the box until they were on the call, and it was on the call that they opened it, and they they, they had yeah, they had their little award, and I can't I don't quite remember what was in it, but yes, I think there are things you can do. Okay. Be creative. I think it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a nice answer. Now we do have, um, um, and I, and I guess probably always a lot of us project managers are used to working with geographically co-located teams. So it is something you feel like you're on webinars or calls or team Microsoft Teams or Zoom all the time. But yeah, so maybe just keeping that time, even if it's not um, a, like a physical gift or a physical delivery, that that you are making the time to ask people how things are and if you know what's going on with them. Yeah, so there's one um, I just think about. Know, I, yeah, I was gonna say the one walking around smiling in the morning. It usually it usually fades, but yeah. Now one of the, one of the project managers I know, and I really liked him. He was he he would that was his he would you know his first hour, no matter what was coming yeah. on in the day, his first hour he would go around saying hello to people, hi, smiling, you know, chatting about what's going on. Mm -hmm. And he could walk, you know, he could be walking into the worst possible steering committee meeting an hour later. But that, that he yeah. you know that was his routine. And the other one over there on the, there next to it was uh, being perceived as a bit David Brent. Well, I don't know if anybody, anybody's actually seen my dancing. It's not that bad, but um, <laughs> yeah, I think you know you again just you, just you know, be a, don't be anything you're not yourself to start with. Um, don't go over the top. 
um, you know, maybe if there's an offsite team meeting, then, then maybe you could go that little way a little bit. But I think, you know, if you're very, if you're very yourself or very you know, natural in that sense, and you don't go crazy on it, um, that's fine. And I was asked a question on the last one, actually, about, well, you know, what if you're not a fun person? Well, I think everybody's a fun person, really. But the reality is it doesn't matter because there's probably someone on your project team who is the fun person. Then, you know, get them to initiate the, the fun and just be supportive of it and, and, and involved in it. There's, you know, there's always ways to, to handle this if you feel a little bit uncomfortable yourself. I think that's a good point. I mean, it, it, we, and we all find that we have a mix of personalities in our teams as well. So you will have the more serious people. There's probably somebody in there. Um, I've never, Peter, I just, it's one of those things, you know, what's that, that phrase called? Full disclosure. I have never watched a single episode of The Office, either the US version oh, or right. the UK version, because it's just too close to home. Some of the trailers <laughs> that I've seen on television, no, thank you. So, um, laughing, yeah, so his, style, his style of humor doesn't work for me at all, I have to say. Um, and I would say that would be quite grating as well if you were, if, if yes. you were trying to be that fun person in the office the whole time. I'm laughing at the one where is where is fun mentioned in the pin box. <laughs> you know what? I think maybe after this we should actually make a submission. We should add it. We should um, actually, I mean, the when when the lazy project manager was in draft format, the, one of the original titles was the lazy body of knowledge. And then I decided that that would probably upset lots of people, so I changed it to lazy project manager, which is actually the better better title title. But yeah, yeah, I think we can. Uh, I think it should be in there. Yeah. You know, um, I, I suppose maybe as a serious answer to that question, where is the fun mentioned in the pinbox? Like we do have the section on getting results, you know, and it, it is like obviously because that's where we're coming to. We're delivering, and what do we do post delivery? Where you know, our, our um, have we delivered our have we delivered what we said we would deliver? What are our benefits and realizations? Um, you know, are we getting the results? And um, I do think that we can inject that question ourselves into that, you know that part of our projects. Like, was this an absolute misery? From beginning to end or mm -hmm. was there any part of this project that we actually enjoyed because i often find that there are parts of the projects that we do enjoy so you know um maybe just sometimes i just say that look for for us at the moment requirements can be quite a difficult process because we have we have a lot of different stakeholders that we have to consider and it's extremely important that we consider them and compliance is extremely important so it's a very serious stage but we take the time to remember when we are going live when we're deploying we take the time to remember to celebrate that as well so you know so maybe if it's something that you're looking to inject in a natural place if you're trying to give this a go then maybe the first step is to remember that you're to recognize the results of the project and you do it with cupcakes or do it with funny hats or as you said do it with the pizza delivery if it's remote but maybe just try to do something there um but you know it's um i don't i think if we did a word search probably we wouldn't find fun in the pinbox to be fair no, but but the important thing is nowhere does it say in the pin bot that you've got to be really miserable for the entire length of the project. So let's just assume it's in there. It's a very that's a very very good point. Okay, it's yeah, it's just because it's not written in there doesn't mean it's it means that you can't have it. Um, yeah, so like there's a good few questions um, and coming up and like I said, remote working is obviously coming up um, a few times and I, I would agree with that comment. It is important that we we think about that positive tone. Um, um, there's a question there for you, Peter. Maybe what scenario presented the most challenge in instilling fun? I don't know yeah, if well, any examples of, of that? Well, yes, it was a quasi government uh, organisation in the UK where I had to go and work in London and in Scotland. There's nothing wrong with either places, but it was, it was, I don't know, it was one of the dullest and coldest environments culturally that I'd ever worked in. And I found it hugely frustrating. And it's the one project where I was replaced as a project manager because I just couldn't, I, you know, I, I can't not have fun uh, to a degree. And, and there was just nothing. There's no way I could break through that culture barrier. Um, Offsite, when I went off with some of the people, um, you know, we'd go for lunch or whatever, then it was very relaxed. But in the environment itself, there was just nothing that encouraged anything apart from a constant state of seriousness. and um, agonizingly slow decision making and all the things that I really got frustrated by. So, yeah, I was, you know, I was annoyed I was replaced as a project manager, but I was very relieved at the same time. And um, yeah, we, I think we sent in quite a serious project manager to take over from me. So I was, I was the wrong person for that, that one for sure. 
but you know that that's an interesting point though as well it's not it's not going to work every time and you've probably learned from your experiences as well when it when it does work when it doesn't work and um that was a learning it took me an awful long time to pick up on and i'm in project management over 20 years now was when when i'm just not the right fit for a project because we are we are all it's and it's not just you know oh i work on financial projects or oh i work on it projects it is a person that there is a personality match i think as well sometimes so so it is i think a, a very important lesson to learn um when you are the right person for the job and when you're not so yes and you, and you have you know, to learn to read quickly and respond you know when you're doing this thing what's working what's not working it's all part of human nature i mean I, you know recently because of the the interest in this kind of humor thing i you know i, I actually have a a sort of half an hour stand up comedy type routine, which is project management based, which I've done, you know, at the end of a number of conferences now. And I did some some stand up comedy training, which was just some of the scariest things I've ever done, because it's all about the the ability to be uh, reading your audience, being challenged yeah. by an audience and, you know, actually standing in a room with nothing in it apart from me and my uh, this coach and uh, being challenged on, on that basis was one of the a really interesting learning experience, but you know, very vulnerable to be in that situation. It's God, probably the heckling is probably a good um, <laughs> test as well for the steering meetings. Just translate <laughs> the heckling into people who are not yeah. happy with the bad news you've just delivered. Um, yeah. I, think yeah, someone, I, I think someone wants to turn the pinbock into cartoon there. It's like, a, yeah, the comic strip. But I, I mean, I think it's, it's actually, I'm looking at that, and I think it's a great idea. And in my head, I'm mm. even thinking that's a great art competition idea for, for the PMI as well, for people to come up with their own cartoons to instill a bit of humor. Absolutely. Um, we, need to get, we need to get Scott Adams and the PMI, Sunil, et cetera, together. And I think they could come up with something fantastic. There you go. That's it. There are actually, there is, there are, are some funny ones, obviously, because there's, there's um, that, that um, and again, it's that fine line between having a laugh at it and crying because you recognize the situation and it, you're just upset now. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's good. I'm I'm going to pass back over. It's we're coming up to four minutes to the hour, so um, I'm I'm going to say thank you to everyone for their comments and questions. And as everybody knows, we we do share this deck at the end as well. But I'm I'm just going to go into a couple of last few items with everybody. So just as a reminder, what um, uh, I suppose to, to thank you very much, Peter. This has been really enjoyable and a completely different change of pace as well, because as I said, we've had some very meaty, um, thought provoking webinars over the last couple of weeks. Um, and it's it's important that we, we, we think about ourselves and how we're doing as well on this. So I think it's been very positive. Um, and we have, um, I will send a reminder out after this to everybody about the offer that Peter made on his slides with regards to the opportunities for five people to, to get the lifetime um, membership to the PM tribe. So we'll make sure that we send that out as a, as a reminder to everybody as well. Don't forget to take up on that. That's a, that's a great opportunity. Um, as usual, guys, we will make sure you, you, you have been signed up for one leadership PDU for attending this webinar, and, and we will take care of that in the background. If, there, if there's any issues, because sometimes there's one or two, we'll let you know in the background if we can. Um, if, um, if you're passing this webinar on to anybody else, if someone missed the opportunity, they, they can self-register at a later date. And for some people that, that maybe are um, getting set up with their PMI number, you can also self-register at a later date. So you'll get the opportunity and don't worry about that. Um, yesterday, um, Norma uh, on our committee popped out an update on our PMI chapter LinkedIn page. We have been invited by the IMCA to join one of their webinars, which is actually taking place tomorrow. It's the IMCA Emotional Intelligent Webinar for Future Leaders. Um, if so if you go to the PMI um, LinkedIn page, or if you, even if you go to my page, you'll see the link for that. Um, and that's a great opportunity. Again, it's it's um, a nice reciprocal relationship that we have with the IMCA. So it's great that they're inviting us to, to join um, their webinar as well. And as you can see, as usual, for the foreseeable future, we're trying to keep a one webinar a week going on our schedule that will take a little break in in july and august and hopefully we're hoping there might be some uh face-to-face -face meetings coming later in the year but obviously that's that's all down to um whatever the government guidelines are so you can look at the ireland chapter for the events you can also go to projectmanagement.com don't forget that as a member of the PMI, you're entitled to get access to all of those webinars and there are dozens of them. So there should be something there to meet your requirements, maybe something related to your organization and the type of projects that you're working on as well. 
so take advantage of that as well so peter all that's left for me to say is that we greatly appreciated you joining us for this webinar today i hope you enjoyed it as well i did um, yes i did thank, thank you very you. much for presenting all right my pleasure have fun fantastic thank you very much and thanks to everyone for for joining us again um we had over 80 people again join us today so that's it we'll sign off for another week and we'll talk to everyone again next week okay thank you peter and thanks to everyone for attending thank you okay